Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tag number 309, and we're jumping in here to Eldrazi Vintage Hate Bear Budget Deck Land. Really fun deck that I brewed recently and then lent out to a friend to play at the Vintage Tournament at GP Portland. This deck is crazy fun. It is a rather straightforward deck and it's got some cool stuff in it. But before we go too far, I just wanna make sure everybody is on the right page with regards to the terminology hate bears. Basically hate bears are two twos and now two ones and a little more flexibility, including a three three, that have a body that you're actually gonna attack with and they've got an ability pasted onto them that makes it really difficult for your opponent to do what they want. Thalia is really the gold standard of hate bears, and we've seen a lot of white hate bears created recently targeted at vintage and at legacy. Containment Priest being another one of those that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. A little bit of the history of hate bears, they've definitely been around for a long time. Gaddick is one of my favorites out there, and Ethersworn Canonist that's sitting in the sideboard for this is also incredible. I was doing some exploration today to try to figure out what the earliest hate bear was, and I'm not actually sure. Meddling Mage might be it. I don't believe that they were actually called Hate Bears back in the time of Avalanche Riders, but I played a lot of Avalanche Riders in a recursion deck and even a aggro deck. Um, True Believer kind of has that feeling of a Hate Bear and may even predate the Hate Bear name. But if you've got an idea of what the earliest Hate Bear really was, please leave it in the comments. Let's jump into this deck. It is a very aggressive deck with lots of creatures in it. We're looking at Containment Priests, Eldrazi Displacers, Phyrexian Revokers, Spirit of the Labyrinth. Simeon Spirit Guide is not a creature, although I guess you could actually cast it, and I have seen Cavern of Souls drop on Ape before to get it out there, but it is about getting some creatures in play, disrupting your opponent's plan and then going after them. The cost on this deck is about a thousand dollars currently and I know when I use the term vintage and budget together it causes some confusion there. This runs about 10% of what a full powered vintage deck would run. You can easily pick this up right now for about $300 to $400 less than that because a lot of stuff was recently printed. I'm going to go into that a little bit more. There are some expensive cards here. This is less than you're going to spend on most legacy decks and I've been asked to try to port this over to legacy and I'm going to be doing that for an upcoming video but I want to do some play testing on it because the legacy Eldrazi decks are actually pretty different than this and I think that this deck could do very well in a similar format in Legacy, and I'm working on that currently. Right now is a solid time to pick up a lot of the cards for this deck. In fact, most of them. Most of them are really cheap currently compared to where they were even a year ago. Stoneforge Mystic is your GP promo, and although it's listed online at TCG at your 20 to 25 range, People at the GPs were selling them for around the 12 to 14 range. If you can get anywhere near one of those events, they're really easy to pick up. Wastelands, Caracas, and Mana Crypt are all pretty easy to get right now, especially if you're doing cash, but even in trade. Now, on the ones that I'm not sure whether now's the right time to buy is Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb has shot up. It really only has two printings, one of those being a From the Vault. I think this is a target that could be reprinted, and the cards that I'm pretty sure will be reprinted within the next 18 months are Cavern of Souls, Chalice of the Void, and Amethyst. Your thorn there is rather high for a one-time printing rare that could easily see its way into the Modern Masters that has yet to be announced. I don't have anything official there or even unofficial, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see another Modern Masters set coming out next summer. If you wanted to go super budget, you can play this deck super budget. You can pull those Wastelands throwing Ghost Quarters. You can put in a Lodestone Golem and some Reality Smashers. In fact, some of the top lists out there are using Reality Smashers, where I kind of lowered the curve with this budget version, got rid of the Reality Smashers because of the Spirit Guides that are in here. The non-budget lists that are similar to this are running usually four pieces of jewelry and a lotus, which allows you to do a little bit higher curve. I actually like the lower curve though a lot better than the higher curve that's been more popular. Although running against each other in the head-to-head -head matchup, Reality Smasher is really good. Being a 5-5 is very nice. On the super budget side, I would also 
think about pulling specifically the Stoneforge Mystics and the Batter Skull package for the Reality Smashers, especially if decks like this become popular because of that 5-5 five, five real size to it. The MVPs in this deck are really Thought Not Seer at the top of the list. When you cast this guy, you are grabbing something great from their hand, and it's often a singleton in Vintage. Occasionally, it can even be a win condition. It really disrupts your opponent a lot more than you realize, especially since you've got some thorn effects out there that are going to slow them down. Those taxing effects on top of taking that three caster that they really need that is now costing them four or five really can prevent them from winning while you beat them down. Eldrazi Displacer is a powerhouse. Really, really good in this deck. Keeps all your other creatures alive. With Containment Priest, it allows you to get rid of their creatures and get rid of their tokens. Really, really solid card overall. It also keeps you kind of in the tempo game where you've got Athalia down there that's attacking, so you've got a clock and your Displacer is blinking their creatures and they're coming into play tapped and then you're swinging with the team and getting through. Why am I playing the Containment Priest main? Not only does it combo with the Displacer, but it is really, really essential against the Dredge decks. I haven't seen a lot of Dredge decks recently in Vintage, although there was one of the stronger Dredge players in the nation out at Gen Con. And it is just essential for trying to shut down those decks. And then the Oath of Druid decks can be really difficult to deal with until you've got a Cavern of Souls out there with humans named, then they've got to have removal. And while they're looking for that removal, you're continuing to tax them and continuing to attack. Thalia makes this deck. I have played Hate Bear decks for a long time before the Eldrazi came out and they are still really, really good without the Eldrazi. Thalia, though, is essential. Thorn of Amethyst is solid, and then you've got the Wing Mirror on top of that. You've got lots and lots of tax events in this, lots of ways to slow your opponent down. This is one of the other lists that I based mine off of. Um, this is a winning list from a 99 person vintage tournament um, as you'll see this is a powered list but it's very similar ideas to it you could power this up most individuals who are running this list at that super high competitive level are running a lotus a pearl and then two other moxes maybe three other moxes i don't actually think that you need the other moxes I like the spirit guides a lot. You need an explosive start. And once you start getting taxing effects down, your moxes actually end up being a little bit of a disadvantage where the ability to pitch a simian spirit guide or in rare cases even cast it and attack with it can be an advantage. Lotus is incredible. It just jumps you up so quickly. I could see putting a Lotus and a Pearl in this deck. The sideboard on this deck is really metagame dependent. One of the comments that I got on this deck when playing against some of the fairer decks was that the Swords to Plowshares should really be moved to main deck. And if you're playing against a fair meta, that makes a lot of sense. Mental Misstep though is so popular in the environment and this deck is so light on targets for Mental Misstep. It's really nice to blink four of their cards really early on and be able to grab the Chalice of the Void and throw it out there on one. And that's one of the interesting things about this deck is do you want Chalice of the Void on zero or do you want it on one? And how early do you put it out? If you've got it in any hand, you drop it as soon as possible on either zero or one, depending on what you're playing against. The rest of this sideboard is kind of heavily tilted against Dredge and against the Artifact decks with the Aether Sworn Cannonus hanging out there to try to help you with your Storm Combo decks. The Storm Combo decks are probably your toughest deck to deal with. The sideboard here could definitely be played with a lot dependent on your local meta, and White has some of the best sideboard cards possibly out there, from things like Spirit of the Labyrinth to Stony Silence to Containment Priest. A lot of people have tried to convince me to try to put Null Rods in here instead of the Stony Silences. I found that people have less removal for enchantments 
and more removal for artifacts in their vintage decks, Stony Silence actually tends to stick around a little bit longer than Null Rods. Kataki is also great. I could see adding another Kataki or two to make sure that you get a Kataki because that can shut down a lot of decks. We've got a tournament report here from Tom Lynch and he played this deck in a four round quick tournament that was on Sunday at the GP. Uh, in round one, he played against Shops and did rather well. It The Shops player actually ended up beating me in the fourth round where I was undefeated at the time. This was the Shops player only loss. Kataki and Stony Silence were both MVPs there. Shops does not have a lot of card advantage and they have a really hard time dealing with upkeeps from Kataki. This is one of the reasons why I would consider putting another Kataki into this deck. In round two, he played against a red-white-blue mentor deck. And once again, your taxing effects are really, really good against mentor because it really slows them down. Trying to remove the mentor as soon as possible, bringing in some swords to plowshares is also useful. Chalice of the Void, Tom was saying, was best here on zero, which does, if you're on the play, prevent the explosive starts. But on the draw, after they've dropped any of their zero casters, I actually like it a lot more on one. It still allows them to cast their cantrips, and they've got a lot of cantrips in there, but they get no value for it. So they have to save them all up for the mentor, and then you fight over the mentor. In round three, he played against a Tinker combo deck and one here, uh, Stony Silence and Containment Priest, both being really strong there. The more dependent individuals are on artifacts, definitely bring in that Stony Silence as soon as possible. Tinker though is one of the scariest possible cards though because it can combo off super early. Going first matters a lot here. I've thought about re-looking at the sideboard with the idea of throwing in some zero casting cost counters like Mind Break Trap to deal with this particular type of combo. It's this explosive, really fast combo that Tom runs into both in round three and in round four that are a bit tough for this deck to deal with because your opponent believes that you've got no way to interact on turn one and if you didn't put out a taxing effect on turn one that they've probably even got the ability to go off on turn two although containment priest is really really good there uh, he was able to win this match but then he lost against a storm combo deck in the last round and i think that the storm combo is really the fastest of the combo decks that you're going to run into in vintage once again you need to get those taxing effects down as soon as possible i would consider your chalice of the void on one here if you get the opportunity stony silence is a solid card to bring in because it slows down a lot of their mana especially if you can add some taxing effects onto their rituals overall, it can make it really, really difficult for them to go off. Now they're gonna have some potential answers in things like Hercules Recall to try to play at end of turn. This is a real battle back and forth. And here is where I would strongly consider maybe some mind break traps for the sideboard. Most people don't expect that card it is a really, really powerful card that I've won several games and is a solid consideration for the sideboard for this deck. Big thank you to Tom Lynch, who's pictured here. He literally picked up this deck the night before. We're playtesting it up in the VIP lounge, working on it, and he ran with it the next day and played some really good games. Thank you for the tournament report. For anybody who's interested in more stuff around Vintage, EDH, Commander, upcoming sets, please subscribe to the channel. It's patrons also that make this channel possible. Become a patron of the channel and help me create some more great content. Leave in the comments if there's a particular topic that you would like to see covered. I've got a lot of content from Gen Con and from GP Portland coming. Lots of videos in the upcoming weeks here. So until next time, take care and choose the cards wisely.